What's going on, you guys? Can't be on a Ugh. The teeth were dirty looking, okay? Ugh. Okay, it's time to brush. It's time to shower. You're right. Later. Michael hasn't taken a shower in three weeks. <laughs> three reeks. <laughs> <laughs> I reek! You guys, stink. Let's, let's cut this out of the vlog. <gasps> it's okay, is it really that bad? Michael. What? What's going on, you guys? Keep me on the camera here. Bridget was here. Right there. And today, Michael smells like crap. Today is Thursday, and today is Throwback Thursday, and I'm telling a throwback story, and we're calling. <laughs> no, you want to do it? I'll just do it all. We're going to call. Hey! We're going to call you guys for streaming. See you soon. Guys, I told you yesterday that I was going to make a bunch of phone calls to say thank you to everybody for streaming. See you soon. And that starts tonight. I want to say thank you guys so much for everything that you've done. And by the way, tomorrow, I'm uploading the lyric video. Oh God, guys, it's soul crushing. I'm just going to warn you. It's sad, but guys, everybody wanted to see it. A lot of people want to know what the lyrics are. So tomorrow on the Angry Grandpa Show channel, the lyric video for See You Soon. Guys, I got to talk to you about something very important when I go to New Orleans. Pray for me. Uh, I'm really scared for you, actually, not gonna lie. Let's do this. In just a second, I'm gonna be telling my throwback story, you guys, and it's gonna be several hours from now. We got a lot of like errands to run off camera, but guys, before we do that, I gotta tell you something that leads into the story. Starting with New Orleans WrestleMania. WrestleMania! Guys, I'm going to New Orleans for WrestleMania next month. And I was talking to Jim. And Jim had an idea that I wanted to run by you guys first. Being that New Orleans is the voodoo death capital of the world, he wants to stay in a haunted hotel. Huh. I don't believe in ghosts. But maybe I could. Guys, I want to know what you think. Do you want me to stay in a haunted hotel when I go to New Orleans? I'm probably going to crap my pants. Oh my god! I'm probably gonna not be able to sleep. I'll pack some diapers. Pack some diapers, extras. Okay. Guys, I need to be pampered when I'm in New Orleans. <laughs> Guys, do you want to see it? Smack the like button if you want me to stay in a haunted hotel when I go to New Orleans. And we're gonna do it. Cross your fingers that everything turns out all right. Guys, oh, I'm, I'm so scared. scared for you. I'm nervous. Woo, I don't know what it's gonna be like. Guys, time for a little throwback story. I just wanted to do that because it leads into the story that I'm about to tell about the other time. You hear about it in just a second. Smack the like button if you want me staying in a haunted hotel. I'm gonna be making, oh God. I swear to God, I just saw a face right there. I'm probably just freaking out. That's what I love. Random sounds like this. I'm not terrified at all. I'm probably just freaking out because of the subject matter. Because you guys, as I said, I'm probably going to be staying in a haunted hotel when I go to New Orleans for WrestleMania. And this story is about staying in a haunted hotel with Angry Grandpa. Now, Dad doesn't believe in ghosts. Un Either you're a motorcycle or your Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Either way, do what you gotta do. Dad's the type of person who never believed in ghosts. Mike, there ain't no such thing as a goddamn ghost. And then he hears something strange and, Mike, it's a goddamn ghost. So naturally, when we stayed in a haunted hotel when I was 12 years old, he took off running from the motel and drove home. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let's backtrack just a little bit. Guys, I was 12 years old, and me and Dad decided to go to Myrtle Beach, land of the water, the hotel, and the expensive food. And we wanted to go because we heard there was a wholesaler selling knives and swords and weapons that we could sell at the flea market for mad cheap. On the way to Myrtle Beach, Grandpa got lost. And I mean really lost. I mean hours out of the way lost. Like, Myrtle Beach was three hours from Columbia. For some reason, it took us t This is obnoxious. Go home. It took us ten hours to get to Myrtle Beach when it should have taken us two and a half. Like, it was ridiculously long. Grandpa was taking detours and back roads and he had no clue where he was going. So much so that by the time we got to Myrtle Beach, we had to go to bed. It was just going on midnight. It was late. We had to go, like, 
Seriously, the place ain't even open anymore. We gotta sleep somewhere. Naturally, my father, being who he was, wanted to put me in the grandest hotel in Myrtle Beach. And Dad, I'd love you for it. He wanted to spare no expense. So he found a place that was like $5 a night. I think it was called the Murder Inn. Dad was not about to spend anything over $20 on a hotel room. And we saw it, guys. We went in there and this place stunk. There was bed bugs. It was a dryness in the air and we couldn't breathe and we had to sleep here tonight. Now, who cares, right? It's just a hotel room. It's one night. We decided to just go right to sleep. Now, about three o'clock in the morning comes and me and dad both wake up and that's a UFO passing by. Just ignore it, okay? It's just aliens. Three o'clock in the morning hits and suddenly we hear boom, boom, boom. And it's coming from the bathroom. Now, naturally, Dad, being as brave as he is and not believing in ghosts, he was like, Mike, go to the bathroom and check. I'm 12 years old, Dad. You're what, 50? Why do I gotta check? You ain't lived as long with me. You ain't gonna care if you die. So, of course, I go to the bathroom to check. I have to investigate the noise. What was it? What was knocking on the bathroom that scared my father so bad? Of course, I didn't find anything. There was nothing. We decided to go back to bed. It was probably rats. 3.30 comes. Bump, bump, bump. Now dad's up. Okay, Mike, this bullshit. What the hell was it? You pranking me or what? Huh? What was it? Again, we're scared. We ignore it. We go back to bed. It becomes a little bit of a pattern. Four o'clock in the morning. Bump, bump, bump. Dad's awake. Five o'clock in the morning. Bump, bump, bump. Dad's awake. 5.05. Bump, bump, bump. Dad was already awake. He's scared to death now. Finally, about seven o'clock in the morning, something happens that I did not hear. Dad swore to God till his dying day that he heard this. Now, I never did. I was asleep. All of a sudden, I hear Dad. Mike, get up. Mike, get up. You got to get the hell out of here. I heard something. All I know is Dad takes off running from the motel. I'm sitting there in bed, half asleep, not knowing where the hell he went. I follow him. He gets in the van. We take off and head back home, not even bothering going to look at knives or swords. And I don't know what happened. Now, apparently, Dad heard his own name. He heard a voice say, Charlie. And he was not having it. He was... Okay, I keep seeing stuff. I'm finishing the story inside, I don't care. Forget it. Nope. So the way the story went as Grandpa told me is I was asleep and he heard his own name. He heard somebody say, Charlie, and he was like, nope, I'm out of there. We left, we went home, never went back to Myrtle Beach again. How about that? Grandpa was driven out of Myrtle Beach by a voice at a $5 hotel. Anyway, guys, it's time to make some phone calls. I wanna take a minute to tell you guys thank you for everything. So, let's do it. I'm gonna call you soon. Here we go. Hey, hope you guys really enjoyed that Throwback Thursday story. Now it's time for us to make some phone calls to thank you guys for downloading See You Soon. The song actually came out a week ago. Can you believe it? I can't even believe it. And also, you guys are freezing up my Twitter. <laughs> Bridget opened up her DMs so people could send phone numbers and it's totally frozen. Guys, I'm making more phone calls. I've been doing it all week, but I just haven't been vlogging it. Now we're vlogging it. Let's phone call some people. Let's phone call some people. That's not right, is it? Let's call some people. Ugh. I don't have a social life. <laughs> First phone call, Courtney. Come on, Courtney. Quit moving. I'm getting in a position that I like. I'm getting lighting. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Hello? Hey, is this Courtney? Get out of here. Hey, Courtney. All right, she said to get out of here. Hi. Thanks for talking. Uh, you told us to get out of here, so I'm out. <laughs> Hold on, I can hardly hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm bugging out right now. Wow. Hold on, I'm going to put you on speaker. My boyfriend can't believe it. Is this not Tabitha? No. This sounds just like your friend Tabitha. No, it's not. Does it not? It does, it does. You sound just like Bridget's friend. <laughs> exactly like her. Oh my God, we watch you guys so much. Holy shit, I can't believe they called you. just Well, hey, I, I wanted to say thank you for, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing okay, man. How about you? <laughs> yeah, you mind if we vlog this? No, man, go for it. Cool. So, what do you guys think about the song? Love it. Yeah, uh, the video's awesome, man. I'm waiting for someone to be like, it's bullshit. That's what I'm waiting for someone oh to be like. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Hello? 
Hey, is this Kyle? What's up, Mike? What's up, Kyle? Wait a minute, is this Bama? <laughs> yes. This is Bama. I've been mistaken for you for the past three weeks. On Good. Network. I love it, dude, because people ask you a bunch of questions and not me. So I'm okay with away. it. You don't know how many numbers I've got people telling me to call them. I was like, dude, I'm not Mike. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. How about you? I'm, do I'm doing good. I just prayed for my girlfriend about 30 minutes ago. I acted like you called, and I came up here like I was on the phone. She goes belting out the damn door. <laughs> Why? Why did she run? She's scared. She loves you guys, but she's scared shitless to talk to y'all. Is she there now? Yeah, she's here. You want to talk to her? Let's talk Force to her. her on the phone. Come here. Don't she try to run again? No, no. Make her get on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, girl. We're great. Why'd you go running out of the house? <laughs> I'm kind of shy, I guess. It's like anxiety, like like when Bridget, when somebody <laughs> delivers <really> food. <laughs> yeah. Like the pizza knocks on the door, Bridget takes out the back. <laughs> I grab my dog and move for the door. <laughs> the guy we are fixing to call is who I would consider to be our biggest fan. He is like the biggest fan ever, guys. His name is Steve Billings. And... Dude's a badass, man. He he likes every tweet. He responds to every video. He's in the comment section every time. He is our biggest fan. I've sent him merchandise. I send him the songs early. This is the kind of stuff that happens when you're a super fan, you guys. Steve, you're awesome. I'm going to prank you a little bit. <laughs> yes, oh my god. Hello? Hey, Steve. Hey, what's up? Uh, Actually, I, I saw you were kind of talking shit on Twitter. I was wondering what that was about. Right now. I'm talking shit on Twitter right now. About me? You said I'm a fat ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's up, man? I just messed up again. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how I pictured his voice to sound. I know, way. my God. I thought you were going to sound like the guy from uh, Mythbusters. You know, like, a, <laughs> to, you know, today we're going to try this. That's what I thought Steve yeah, Billings too. sounded like. It's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. Are you a real person? Yeah, one time me and Bridget accused each other of being Steve Billings. I was like, I was like, I know Steve ain't real. It's you. <laughs> oh gosh. Actually, had somebody tweet me and say, I know this is you, Michael, in a fake account. Well, now we know. Now we all know Steve Billings is real. Oh. Hey, is Brian there? Yeah, what's up? What's up, Brian? What up, Brian? What's up? I asked you first. <laughs> Fortnite, what are you doing? Oh. You know, Keemstar tried to get me to play Fortnite and like I die instantly, so I'm like, fuck this game, man. Yeah, oh my gosh. Hello? Oh yeah, is this Mandy? Yeah. I saw your name written on the wall at a gas station and I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> okay, Bridget, what the hell? That was funny. Bridget ruined it. <laughs> What's up, Mandy? <laughs> you know, that would have been a good prank if Bridget didn't ruin it. I'm sorry. Hello? Hey, is this Taylor? Yep. What's up? This is Kip behind a camera. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's, What's up, up, Taylor? <laughs> See, these are the reactions I like. Some of these people like, oh, they're like, hey, what's up? And then they just like hang up. They're like, I'm done with this. <laughs> they're haters, man. What is oh up? Oh my gosh. I didn't think you guys would actually call me. Well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, number one, thank you for, you know, downloading the song and, you know, talking about it. It's helped tremendously. I love it. It's so good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I put a lot of emotions into it, but not all the emotions. Like when you hear the song, Dear Dad, it's gonna, it's gonna tear you up. It's pretty, uh, pretty heartbreaking, that song. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. So apologies in advance if that makes you cry. Oh yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> hey. All right, you guys, one more phone call. We're calling Krista. This is it. Guys, thank you so much. If I didn't call you, I'm not done. I'm going to be making phone calls for the next two weeks. So keep showing me that you got the song. 
Keep harassing us on Twitter. Let us know, and I'm going to be making more phone calls. This is just the end for the vlog. Oh. Krista. This has been a lot of fun. I know. Hello? Hey, is this Krista? Oh my god, hi Michael, how are you? Uh, my name is Bill actually, who's Michael? <laughs> I know it's you, I've seen the other videos. What's up? <laughs> what up? Very good, how are you doing? There's Bridget. Hi Bridget. Hi Krista. You're so beautiful, I love you so much. Thank you, I love you too. Oh my god, you guys are amazing. Michael, I can't tell you how great that song was. You did such an amazing job. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I mean, listen man, I lost my dad two years ago and I'm going through the process through you guys. Like, seeing everything with your dad, it's really helping me and I can't thank you enough for that. I'm so sorry about your dad, you know. it's. I don't know how it is two years later, but I know it's not easier two months later, and it's just, it's been so hard. It's just, you know, it's, I, I know what you're saying, like, it's one of the worst things you can go through in your vlogs, talking about people coming up to you and saying sorry, and not being able to, you know, know what to say, like, I, I've been through it, and I heard it so many times that, like, after a certain amount of time, you don't know what to say anymore, you know? Yeah, it's... It's, it's a numbing feeling, and I don't know if I'll ever feel right again, you know? To go from me and my dad being like shadows for 30 years to all of a sudden, I'm never going to see him again. I can't process it. I, it's, it's tremendously heart-shattering for me to imagine life without him, and I can only imagine it's the same for you. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, it doesn't get easier, but it gets... It gets easier in the sense to deal with, but I wanted to say something to you. I saw your vlog the other day where you were talking to your nephew about everything and how you were saying, oh, something you said really got to me. You were like, oh, I know I'm not the man that he was, but I want you to know that, like, you are, Michael, you're amazing. Like, the things you've done for your nephews and for your family, you're such a great person, and he raised you to be such an amazing man, and, like, I know you're going to follow in his footsteps and you're going to do so good and like I said, you're just an amazing man. He raised you so well. Well, hey, I appreciate that. Like I said, man, you deserve the world. Like, I know it's not going to get easier for a while, but you guys are going to get through. You got Bridget and I know your dad's with you. He's so proud of you. You know, I, I put on the smile, you know, every day. No, listen, man, I did the same thing, and it's hard because my mom is like a zombie, and she sits in her chair all day and just sulks, and like, I'm only 19, and it feels like I lost them both, you know what I mean? Wow, so you lost them at 17. I'm really sorry to hear that, because it's so unfair, because I still didn't have enough time with my dad, but to, I couldn't imagine losing him, like, so young, because I almost did. You know, he, he almost died so many times, and I couldn't imagine being 30 and having lost them 15 years ago. You know, I couldn't imagine how that would feel. Yeah, it's just, it's, it sucks too, because all my siblings are in their 30s, and they, they talk about all the times that my dad Dear Dad, I see you're not in pain. It's good to know the bruises on your back have gone away. You're a great man.